Hey, welcome to UK Wildcrafts. If you're just getting into mushroom spotting or foraging, you might get a bit confused about what you should be looking for when you're trying to identify a mushroom. I find it helps to write down all of the identification features that you want to find for that mushroom. And I've turned that into a general checklist that hopefully can help you to ID mushrooms. The first thing that I'll look at is the location. So where the mushroom's growing, is it a woodland or a grassland species? Is there any specific trees that the mushroom grows with? It's really important to learn to identify trees to help you find where mushrooms will grow. For example, these porcini or sep mushrooms, I find they mostly grow around beech and oak trees. The second thing that I look at is the time of year that the mushrooms can be found. Now the majority of mushrooms grow in around September to October, what we call the mushroom season. But some mushrooms can grow all year round and there are some that will grow at a specific time of year like just in the winter or just in the spring. So with just these two bits of information, the location of where it grows and the time of year that it grows, we can massively narrow down our hunt for the mushrooms. For example, wood ear mushrooms almost always grow on elder trees and are mostly found in the winter. The next thing I look at is the form of the mushroom. Is it a typical mushroom form with a cap and a stem? Or is it a spherical form like an earth ball? Or is it a bracket or polypore mushroom like a chicken of the woods? And also take note of whether it's growing straight out of wood or straight out of the ground. Then take a look at the growing pattern. Is it a single mushroom? Or are they growing as a large group or a tightly packed cluster like these sulfur tufts? They could also be growing in a ring like these parasols. Or in a troop like these trooping funnels. The next thing I look at is the cap of the mushroom or the top surface of the mushroom. So I'll look at what shape is it? Is it domed? Is it funnel shaped? Also, does it have an umbo in the center or this raised bump? Or is the cap centrally depressed? Also, what size is the cap? How many centimeters across is it? And try to look at a few different specimens because younger ones can look quite a lot different to older ones. Also take note of the colour of the cap and whether it's got different colours, maybe it's got zonal colouring, maybe it's darker at the centre than it is at the edge. Also take note of whether it's wet or dry because some mushrooms can change colour depending on whether they're wet or not. Next up we look under the cap and look whether it's got gills, pores or spines. The majority of mushrooms like this parasol will have gills. A few other mushrooms like the belites and polypores will have pores. And then a very few mushrooms like the hedgehogs will have spines. So if like this parasol the mushroom has gills then look whether the gills are crowded or distant, meaning are they close together, like these are here, or are they quite far apart, like in this amethyst deceiver. Also, what colour are the gills, and do they change colour after damaging or bruising? Also, are the gills flexible, like these here, or do they break off when you touch them? We also need to look at if the gills attach to the stem. So these gills are free, meaning that the gills are not attached to the stem. They could be slightly attached to the stem or fully attached to the stem, or they could be decurrent like these oyster mushrooms, meaning that the gills run down the stem. So how the gills attach to the stem is a very important feature to take note of when identifying a mushroom. 
So next we look at the stem, also called the stipe. Is it narrow or is it thick? Does the stipe snap if you try to bend it or is it flexible? Is the stem pretty much the same width all the way down or does it taper towards the cap or the base? Like this porcini tapers towards the cap. Does the stem have a ring or a skirt on it? Like you see this parasol has a ring there and that is where the cap used to attach to the stem. Just keep in mind that these can fall off so that's why you need to check several mushrooms. You also want to measure the length of the stem and check the colour of the stem and also if it's got any sort of patterning on it. A good identification feature for the parasol is this snakeskin like pattern on the stem. Likewise on the porcini mushroom you can see it's got reticulations right at the top of the stem, these white lines. That's a good identification feature for the porcini. Also when you're unearthing the mushroom you want to make sure you get all of the base of the mushroom. You can see this one here has got a bulbous base. It's also very important to check if mushrooms have a vulva or egg sac at the base like these death caps. Next we want to cut a mushroom in half lengthways to see the flesh and you want to check what colour the flesh is. Does it discolour after reacting with the air? Does it have a nice firm flesh like these porcinis? And also check what it smells like. Does it have a general mushroomy smell like field mushrooms? Does it have a nice fruity smell like chanterelles? Or maybe a nasty chemical smell like yellow stainers? Another really good way of identifying mushrooms is to take a spore print. I'll do this if I'm IDing a mushroom for the first time. Simply place a mature mushroom, gills or pores down with the stem removed on some plastic or glass. Cover with a bowl and leave overnight and then check the colour of the spores that are left in the morning. Just be aware that if you're bringing a potentially toxic mushroom home to identify, you should keep it in a safe place, label it toxic and warn anyone else in the house that it might be a toxic mushroom just to avoid accidental poisonings. Finally, and most importantly, if I'm foraging a mushroom, am I 100% sure of my ID? Take note of any similar looking species, especially toxic lookalikes. You should learn any potential toxic lookalikes before foraging a mushroom to be completely safe. And use several good foraging books and websites like firstnature.com to learn the identification features that you need to know. I have a video on the books I use. I'll leave a link in the description. And also, as I said before, always try to check more than one mushroom if possible. A single mushroom may be damaged or missing some vital part like its ring for identification and try to check mushrooms in different stages of growth. Hopefully this video can help you on your mushroom walks and thanks for watching.